नमस्कार स्टूडेंट्स माई सेल्फ लव ओझा फ्रॉम डी एम स्कूल भुवनेश्वर स्टूडेंट्स एज वी नो द एक्टिविटीज फॉर इम्प्रूविंग क्रॉप इल्ड्स कैन बी क्लासिफाइड एज क्रॉप वेराइटी इम्प्रूवमेंट क्रॉप प्रोडक्शन इम्प्रूवमेंट एंड क्रॉप प्रोटेक्शन इम्प्रूवमेंट इन द प्रीवियस सेशन वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट क्रॉप वेराइटी इम्प्रूवमेंट इन दिस प्रेजेंट सेशन वील डिस्कस अबाउट क्रॉप प्रोडक्शन इम्प्रूवमेंट एंड क्रॉप protection improvement let's see crop production improvement it includes nutrient management irrigation and cropping patterns nutrient management means giving or enriching the soil with various nutrients required for the proper growth of the crop irrigation means supplying the water to the crop and cropping patterns there are various cropping patterns and we will discuss about that later on now before that we have to see the scenario of farming in india it varies it varies a lot from very small farm to very large farm and also in terms of land money and technology some farmers is very small land whereas some farmers do farming in huge land some farmers utilize very small money whereas some farmers use huge money and similarly some farmers use technologies of traditional quality whereas some farmers use modern technologies based on that level of production practices in india can be classified as no cost production low cost production and high cost production now see one by one first one was nutrient management the different sources of nutrients are air water and soil from the air crops get carbon and oxygen from the water they get hydrogen and oxygen and the from the soil they get various nutrients some of them require in large quantities whereas some of them require in less quantity the nutrients that require in large quantities are called micronutrients whereas the nutrients that require in small quantities they are called micronutrients examples of micronutrients are nitrogen phosphorus potassium calcium magnesium and sulfur and the examples of micronutrients are iron manganese zinc copper etc to enrich the soil with these nutrients we require manure and fertilizers now manure as we know manure is obtained from the excreta of animals decomposition of excreta of animals and plant wastes and they are rich in organic matters they also increase the water holding capacity of the soil and increases the number of friendly microbes that means they are helpful for the soil and they increases the quality of the soil there are different types of manure main of them are two types first one is compost and vermi vermi compost and second one is green manure what is compost compost is obtained from the decomposition of waste materials and i as i said earlier it is rich in organic matter and compost prepared by using earthworm or dead worm are called vermi compost now green manure green some plants like hemp guar are grown in the soil before the actual sowing of the crop and after that they are plowed to mulch in the soil what happens they help in in reaching the soil with nutrients like nitrogen and phosphorus and they are called green manure now next one is fertilizers as you read in class 8 fertilizers are chemical substances they are commercially produced plant nutrients and they are rich in only specific nutrients like nitrogen phosphorus and potassium examples of fertilizers are urea superphosphate 
NPK, etc. And they should be applied very carefully. Otherwise, they may harm the crop. And also, continuous use of fertilizers can destroy the soil fertility. Therefore, for sustainable development, we should do organic farming. And it also include utilization of manure. Now, you can easily compare between manure and fertilizers. And which one is good for sustainable practices? For sustainable practices, we should encourage organic farming. And it, there is minimal or no use of chemicals and maximum use of organic manures like biofertilizers and biopesticides and also healthy cropping patterns. Healthy cropping patterns are intercropping, crop rotation, mixed cropping, about that we will study later on. Now, next one is irrigation. As we know, most of the agriculture in India is rain fed, but monsoon is uncertain. Poor monsoon can ruin or destroy the crop. Therefore, to ensure crop gets water at the right time, we need irrigation. And sources of irrigation in India are wells, canals, river lift system, tanks, and one more thing, rain water harvesting. And for encouraging sustainable practices, we must adopt rain water harvesting. Now next, as I said earlier, there are different cropping patterns and major of them are mixed cropping, intercropping and crop rotation. We will study all of these three one by one. First one is mixed cropping. It is growing two or more crops. It is growing two or more crops simultaneously on the same piece of land. And in this type of cropping, seeds are mixed up before sowing. And this reduces the chance of crop failure. That means it is a kind of insurance. For example, if one crop is ruined or destroyed, other will survive. And farmer will get less harm or less loss. Examples of this type of cropping are wheat plus gram. That means wheat and gram are grown in same field. Another example, wheat and mustard are grown in same field. Now, you can see the picture of mixed cropping. This one is. As you can see, there are two types of crops here and they are grown. There is no pattern. There is no definite pattern. Next one is intercropping. In intercropping, it is growing two or more crops simultaneously on the same field in definite pattern. Here there is difference. Here crops are grown in, two crops are grown in definite patterns. And crops are selected such that their nutritional requirements are different. So that there is maximum use of nutrients of the soil. And seeds are not mixed. Seeds are not mixed before sowing. Examples, soybean and maize. As we know, soybean is a leguminous plant and root nodules of this plant contains nitrogen fixing bacteria. And these supply nitrogen to soybean as well as maize. Now, you can better understand with the help of example picture. Now, here, see the image of intercropping. You can easily see they do two different patterns. Two crops are grown in different definite patterns. What is the advantage? Advantage is if one type of crop is infected with pest, other will not affected because most of the pests and insects are crop specific. And another advantage is or maximum nutrients of the soil is utilized as these crops have different nutritional requirements. Next, third one is crop rotation. It is growing different crop 
alternatively on a piece of land. For example, in one season, wheat is grown, in the next season, soybean or some gram is gr grown. It helps in replenishment of the soil with nutrients. For example, growing wheat and leguminous plant alternatively. How it is advantage? Wheat, as we know, when we grow wheat, it takes some nutrients and nitrogen also. And after that, that soil will be deficient to nitrogen. In the next season, when some pulses plant or leguminous plant are grown, they enrich the soil with nitrogen. And again, that soil will be rich in nitrogen. Now, next. Next one is crop protection management. It includes weed control, disease control, pest control and storage of grains. We will see them one by one. First one is weed control. It is, we can do weed control by various methods. First one is picking weeds manually. That means we can remove the weeds manually, either with some instrument or with hand. Second, spraying weedy sides or herbicides in the field. Third one is, using insects that feed on particular weeds. And last one is prevent, taking preventive measures. That means seed weed preparation, timely sowing of crops, intercropping and crop rotation. That means healthy cropping patterns to take the preventive measures. Now, can you say which of them is suitable for Sustainable development. Let us see one by one. Picking weeds manually. Yes, it is eco friendly or bio friendly because it does not cause any harm to the environment. Second, spraying weedicides or herbicide. Since weedicides and herbicides are harmful for the soil, therefore it should be used very limited quantity. Third one is using insects that feed on particular weeds. Yes, it is also bio-friendly. That means it helps in sustainable development or sustainable practices. And last one is preventive measures. As we know, prevention is better than cure. And therefore, last one is definitely helpful for the sustainable development. That means Except the second one, we can use three methods to control weed as sustainable practices. Now here is video of removing weeds. You can see it. Namaste students. Today we have to know how to remove the weeds manually. As you know, weeds are unwanted plants and they may take the major nutrients from the soil. And Due to this reason, the major crop cannot grow properly. Therefore, they must be removed. Now, we'll see how we can remove the weeds manually. Please come closer. This is weed. And this is unwanted plant. It must be removed. While removing the weed, you pull it from the base. Otherwise, the plants may break and roots will be inside the soil like this hold it and pull it when you pull it you will see that some soil remain attached to the weed we must remove it because this soil is very important and it contains useful nutrients for the plant to grow how to remove it give some jerk You can also put this in water so that it is removed and then now you can throw this weed. You can also use this weed at boundaries so that it can hold soil and protect the, prevent the soil erosion. Now we can see, look for some more weeds. Again, look this 
good. Again, hold it from the base. Remove it. And throw it. We can also use some instrument. See, this is called kurpi. How to use this kurpi? Hold the weed and do it carefully, otherwise it may hurt your hand. See how it is? Remove. You can use it in your garden. One more instrument, this is a spade. You can also use this spade to remove the weeds. And while removing, dig, dig the soil. Otherwise, again the roots will remain inside the soil. Dig some soil like this. Okay, this is, I think, sufficient. Then, this is the roots. Again, see. Soil is attached to the weeds to give some jerk, the soil will be removed and then pick the weeds and throw it outside. Thank you. Now, next one is disease control. Various pathogens that affect the crops are bacteria, fungi and viruses and they can be controlled by spraying chemicals on crop plants uh, and treating the seeds and soil with chemicals. But again, these chemicals are harmful for the crops as well as soil. Therefore, they should be used very carefully. Next one is pest control. Pests attack the plants in three different ways. They cut the root, stem and leaves. Secondly, they suck the cell sap from the various parts of the plant and third, they bore into the stem and fruits and deteriorate the quality of fruits and crop and they can be controlled by pesticides. But for sustainable practices, for sustainable development, we should encourage bio-pesticides. Now, storage of grains. As we know, Every year, a large quantity of grains are lost due to various factors, mainly biotic factors as and abiotic factors. Biotic factors include insects, rodents, fungi, mites, and bacteria. Abiotic factors include they are inappropriate moisture and temperature, and these factors cause Degradation in quality of the crop, loss in weight, poor germinability, and discoloration of produce. Preventive measures, that means they can be controlled by proper treatment of the granaries so that they will free from germs and also from the rodents. And second one, second one is systematic management of warehouses. Now, we can conclude from this session that requirements of nutrients are necessary for the proper growth of the crop plants and we should encourage the sustainable practices. We should encourage biofertilizers for the better environment. Second, we can enrich the soil by using manure and fertilizers and Organic farming should be encouraged for sustainable practices. Various methods of irrigation are wells, rivers, canals, but for sustainable practices, we should encourage rainwater harvesting. Next one is, we also discussed about healthy, healthy cropping patterns, that is mixed cropping, intercropping and crop rotation and how they helpful in preventing the diseases and maximum utilization of the nutrients. And at last we discussed about crop protection management. That means 
वीट कंट्रोल डिजीज कंट्रोल पेस्ट कंट्रोल एंड डिफरेंट वेज ऑफ स्टोरेज ऑफ ग्रेन्स नाउ देयर इज सम प्रैक्टिस क्वेश्चन लेट्स ट्राई टू सॉल्व देम है देर इज ए क्वेश्चन एंड थ्री ऑप्शन आर देयर यू शू हैव टू टेल विच वन इज करेक्ट एंड वाई क्वेश्चन इज विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग कंडीशन विल गिव द मोस्ट बेनिफिट्स टू दी फार्मर एंड वाई ऑप्शन ए इज फार्मर्स इज यूज हाई क्वालिटी सीड्स डू नॉट एडॉप्ट इरीगेशन और यूज फर्टिलाइजर्स सेकेंड ऑप्शन इज फार्मर्स यूज ऑर्डिनरी सीड्स एडॉप्ट इरीगेशन एंड यूज फर्टिलाइजर्स एंड थर्ड ऑप्शन इज फार्मर्स यूज क्वालिटी सीड्स एडॉप्ट इरीगेशन यूज फर्टिलाइजर्स एंड यूज क्रॉप प्रोटेक्शन मीजर नाउ इट इज क्लियर दैट ऑप्शन सी इज करेक्ट वाई बिकॉज फार्मर्स आर यूजिंग क्वालिटी सीड्स दैट मीन्स फ्रॉम द क्वालिटी सीड्स दे विल गेट द प्लांट ऑफ डिजायरेबल क्वालिटी दे आर ऑल्सो एडॉप्टिंग इरीगेशन दैट मीन्स द प्लांट और क्रॉप्स विल गेट सफिशेंट वाटर टू ग्रो दे ऑल्सो यूज फर्टिलाइजर्स एंड मेन्यूअर सो दैट प्लांट्स और क्रॉप्स गेट डिफरेंट न्यूट्रियट्स दैट इज रिक्वायर्ड फॉर द प्रॉपर ग्रोथ ऑफ द प्लांट और क्रॉप्स एंड दे आर ऑल्सो यूजिंग क्रॉप प्रोटेक्शन मीजर्स दैट मीन्स प्लांट्स और क्रॉप्स विल रिमेन फ्री फ्रॉम वेरियस डिजीजेज दे आर फॉर ऑप्शन सी विल द करेक्ट एंसर क्वेश्चन नंबर टू वॉट आर द डिजायरेबल एग्रोनॉमिक कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स फॉर क्रॉप इंप्रूवमेंट नाउ एज आई सेड यू कैन रिकॉल फ्रॉम द प्रीवियस सेशन दैट दे आर टू टाइप्स ऑफ क्रॉप्स वन इज फॉर एनिमल्स सेकेंड इज फॉर ह्यूमन बींग्स एंड द एनिमल क्रॉप इज कॉल्ड फॉर्डर एंड दे शुड बी दे शुड हैव मैक्सिमम ब्रांचिंग सो दैट दे फुलफिल द डिमांड ऑफ द कैटल्स बट फॉर द ह्यूमन बींग द साइज ऑफ क्रॉप शुड बी ड्वार सो दैट द क्रॉप विल गेट मिनिमम न्यूट्रियट्स एंड मैक्सिमम न्यूट्रियट्स गोज टू द ग्रेन्स और फ्रूट्स क्वेश्चन नंबर थ्री कंपेयर द यूज ऑफ मैन्यूअर एंड फर्टिलाइजर्स इन मेंटेनिंग सॉइल फर्टिलिटी very clear i had we have mentioned and we have discussed in the previous session also and this session also ki manures are good for the soil they are bio friendly they are rich in humus they have good water holding capacity whereas fertilizers have such only fixed nutrients and over use of fertilizers may damage the crop also they will deteriorate the quality of soil question number 4 why should preventive measures and biological control methods be preferred for protecting crops we discussed also as we know prevention is better than cure and preventive measures require less money and it is very easy to control at early stage when there is infection and therefore it is easy to for the management question 5 what are the advantages of intercropping and crop rotation you can do it the advantages of intercropping there is maximum utilization of nutrients and also the plants get less affected by the pests and insects in crop rotation the utilization of the nutrients for example as we discussed earlier leguminous plants the roots of leguminous plants contain nitrogen fixing bacteria and they enrich the soil and in the next session 
when we grow wheat crop that nitrogen is utilized by the wheat crop now next animal husbandry about this we will discuss in next session thank you